So this is the second portion of the grammar in Lesión 7. And we're going to look at indefinite and negative words. Indefinite words refer to the people and things that are not specific. So like I say something, if I say something, I'm not giving you a specific thing. I'm using a general form of that word. Negative words would deny the existence of people and things or they would contradict a statement. So something like no one or nothing. Spanish indefinite words have corresponding negative words which have an opposite meaning. So if I look at the indefinite words like something, someone, some, either, always, I wouldn't say no algo. I would say nada for nothing. Um, and it's a totally different word. So in English, something and nothing have that thing in common. So I have something compound word, no thing compound word, whereas in Spanish, we are completely changing the, co the formation of this word. So there are two ways to form negative sentences in Spanish. You can place the negative word before the verb, or you can place the no before the word verb and the negative word after, okay? So nadie se levanta temprano. Nadie is coming before the reflexive verb. Or if I say no se levanta nadie temprano, then that would be no one gets up early. But because the nadie comes after the verb, I have to put the word no before the verb. And here I have ellos nunca gritan. So notice nunca is used before the verb. But if I write it as ellos no gritan nunca, the no must come before the verb so that we have the indication of that negative happening. Because they refer to people, alguien and nadie are often used with the personal a. The personal a is used before, I would say alguno, alguna, algunos, algunas, and ninguno, ninguna, when these words are going to refer to people and they are the direct object. So in the examples below, you'll notice we are referring to groups of people, and we're, so we're using the personal a, and because it's taking on the direct object. Before a masculine singular noun, I take alguno and ninguno, and I'm shortening them and dropping off the o and adding the accent to the u. That's an important nuance you're gonna see in your work this week. If I was to compare this in English and Spanish, in English, it's wrong to say no, no. If I say no, no, it's a double negative, which therefore makes it positive. In Spanish, however, it's pretty common to have two or more negative words. If I compare these sentences in English and Spanish, you'll see that the Spanish can have more than one negative, and in some cases, it can have up to three. But once the English has one negative, the entire sentence takes on that negative meaning. And no other negative word can be used or we wind up with a double negative happening. In Spanish, though, once a sentence is negative, no other affirmative word can be used. So therefore, every indefinite idea must be expressed through that lens of negative vocabulary. Pero is often used to mean but. The meaning of sino is but rather on the contrary. So this is a, a nuance phrase that when we're trying to say, oh, on the other hand, or on the contrary, I would want to use sino. It is used when the first part of the sentence is negative and the second part has to contradict it. So the students go to bed early but rather late. So, but rather late is contradicting, so therefore I would use sino. If I say the towels are expensive, but beautiful, there's no negative form there, so I'm gonna use perro. So that's gonna be the determination is if there's a negative in the first part of the sentence and the second part is gonna contradict that. 